My name is Rochelle Potter. I go by Rose sometimes. Originally, I was born and raised in Japan, and I moved to the States for college to Portland, Oregon, so I consider myself from Portland, Oregon, generally speaking. I had my life sorted out and really loved what I was doing, but one day I was driving in my car and it was later at night than, than usual and there was this red light and I got trapped at the red light and the brothel was right there, like just three feet away from where I was in my car and I was like, shoot, there's a girl right there and she's probably looking at me and it's really awkward because we're super close, but here I am right next to her. You know, it was a really disturbing thing to just see all these brothels and those, these girls, and so I ignored it. I purposely would ignore it and like go down a different road so I didn't have to pass them. I had this thought like, and I think it was God saying it, because I don't take credit for that, but he was like, Ro, do you love her? And I was like, no. The honesty of my statement really kind of jarred me because, you know, we're supposed to love everybody and especially the prostitutes, especially the poor, we're supposed to serve and love people. And I had no interest in even trying to love this woman. And I was ashamed by my, my reaction. And I thought, well, at least what I can do trapped at this red light is I could look at her as a human being, not just as an issue, but as a human being. So I forced my eyes to look over at her. And I was like, you know, in my mind, God loves you. And I'm trying to right now I can't because I don't I'm not being a very good loving Christian person but I'd, I'd like to try to love you <laughs> and she didn't respond of course she's just brushing her hair and you know in the brothel but for me that moment was I am opening up myself to the issue whatever it looks like whatever it will cost me I'm opening myself up and therefore I have to respond somehow there are 27 million people that are currently in some form of slavery. A place in the world where there's no trafficking does not exist. You know, this pastor in a really small town um, was like, trafficking doesn't happen here. And I said, well, do you get trucks that come through? Do you get people coming through because it's on a highway? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, trafficking happens. There is actually one other girl that I think about a lot that I did an interview with, and she had been brutally trafficked around Eastern Europe for a couple years and she had cuts all up and down her arm and tried to commit suicide 10 times and was in a shelter but ended up running away from the shelter a lot and they'd find her and bring her back but as she's telling her story she has a cigarette in her hands just shaking you know she's just trembling because of everything that she's seen and my heart broke for her I was so you know again angered that somebody could do this to somebody but then also just knowing that it's gonna take her the rest of her life to walk through this. And hopefully, and she wasn't a Christian in the, um, the shelter that I was interviewing and running around um, talking to the girls that they're not Christian either. So I just hoped that she could really find freedom, really find a way to heal. But I really think, man, Jesus is, is the one, you know, he's the thing that we need to really overcome this. We need Jesus to, to be able to get over that. So I, I think about her, my heart breaks for her. I hope she's okay. Last I heard she had run away again and I don't know if they caught up to her. And that sticks with you, you know, the stories that aren't success stories, but they give you a glimpse of the hard stuff in life. And reality is not like the movies. It doesn't necessarily end well. Reality is really tough and you probably will end up crying a lot more than laughing when you're dealing with an issue like this. But then I think, you know, as much as my heart breaks over this stuff, how much more does God's heart break over it? I think I get torn up about it, or God is, God is weeping about it. And he keeps asking, like, who's going to go and help these girls? Who's going to help the, the people who are enslaved in the world? Who will go? And, you know, when I feel the pain of the suffering that I see, I, re I recognize it's just a fraction. And the anger that I have is just a fraction of how God feels about it. And so that, in a way, gives me comfort that you know, God is so much more passionate about this issue than I will ever be. And it's important for me to draw on His strength and His power as I go out and move in this and not on my anger, not on my, like, I want to bring justice to the world, but more really asking, like, God, what do you see is necessary? Since you see the whole picture, what do you see and what can I do in that? And then learning through the pain of it, still how to love people, still how to love that guy who exploits that girl. Because God loves him. He hates what he does, but God loves the pimp, and he loves the trafficker, 
and I don't understand that sometimes, but I try to get to the place of being like, okay, God, that's what, that's how you see the world. I want to see the world how you see it, and focus on Him, not get sidetracked by the issue. I don't want to be a hypocrite with my faith. I want to live out what I actually say I believe, and that means going on this crazy journey that has led to all kinds of interesting places. A lot of awareness has happened in the last eight years since I started getting involved. But people get stuck with what can I do, because the doing again is where the the belief meets reality, that action step. Because then you have to do something, and that doing is scary. Allow yourself to look into different organizations, different ministries, different nonprofits, see what they're doing, and try it out. And if you find something that doesn't work, that's fine. That wasn't a waste of time. You explore it. If you find something that's like really awesome and that clicks with you, okay, dig into that one. Try it out and go for it. And it's going to take lifetimes, as in not just one person's life. It's going to take multiple people's lives. And maybe for one person, they're involved for a month. Maybe another person, they're involved for 25 years. It again is that conversation. Thank、you